Hey guys, and welcome back to Insomniac's Dream. It has been way too long since I brought you guys a new tutorial, so let's start Halloween out right. With the craziness of this year, I will not be doing 31 days, but I will be trying to bring you as many new Halloween looks and DIYs as possible, so please stay tuned for those. And for now, let's just jump right into how to bring this skeletal scarecrow to life. First things first, I will be using these foam latex prosthetics that MostlyDead.com were nice enough to send to me. They are super lightweight and easy to apply, but first we do want to protect our brows by doing a few coats of spirit gum or a glue stick, whatever works for you, and just creating a few layers to make sure the hairs are protected. Also, as a heads up, Alice has taken to sitting on the back of my makeup chair while I'm filming, so you may see her throughout the Halloween tutorials just hanging out. I did quickly powder down the spirit gum, and then I wanted to start figuring out where the foam latex prosthetic would sit. A good trick to this is to use a little bit of translucent powder around the edges to see where the mask will sit, that way you know where to apply the glue. For my application, I am using Prosade, and you want to start with the center of the face first and lay that down before you glue down the entire mask, that way you can best find where it will fit on your face. It's really useful here to just take your time and make sure that it is sitting properly along the center of the face, especially along the bridge of your nose, and then afterwards you can go ahead and start doing the sides. Prosade is a great contact adhesive as it starts at white and then goes clear when it is ready to be adhered. Because foam latex is flexible, you can maneuver the prosthetic a bit when applying it better to fit your face. I lifted the brow on mine so my eyes would be more comfortable and not be pushing down along the sides of my eyes. Once the main areas are done, you can go along the edges and any areas that are lifting, you can just go ahead and stick them down. And for this prosthetic, it is meant to sit low on your chin as that's where the back of the prosthetic cushions. But if you wanted your teeth to touch, you could always just trim the bones on the side there and all you would do is black out your chin instead of your lip. I went for the sitting on the chin option and then proceeded to bug Alice once I had glued it down the exact same way as I did the top of the face. And then if you're worried about your hairline at all, it's easy to just go over it with a glue stick and protect those hairs that are by the sides of your face. And then I just took a little bit of liquid latex and went along the edges to help blend them in. The forehead, I would suggest quite a few more layers if you were going to leave it this way. I just knew that later I would be adding burlap to that section anyway, so I didn't care too much about it. But if you add a few layers, you will blend down that thick seam line that you have at the top. With the green and blue gray color from the Monster Wheel Ben Nye palette, I just went ahead and stippled this on with a sponge and just kind of placed it in sporadic sections to give kind of a splotchy look. To create a base color for my teeth, I just did a mix of white, brown, and yellow and applied this with a detail brush all over the teeth. And then taking the Mayron Bruise Wheel, I took the yellow from it and started adding this to the gum area along the teeth section just to start discoloring the teeth and making them look more gross. Using a small brush here helps because you can pull it down and create little striations that you might see on actual discolored teeth. And then I also took the reddish brown color from the same palette and went over this and applied it even more into the gum lines to help them look a little bit more irritated and gunked up. For something like this, when you're working with a pre-made prosthetic, it really helps to highlight the sculpture of the prosthetic by pushing those darker colors into all of the crevices and really trying to highlight and low light those areas. I used that same reddish brown cream color and started applying that to the other areas of the face that I wanted to really show the indents of the skull. I used a little bit of a brown shadow to blend out where needed, but made sure that the cream was doing a lot of the work for me as it blends a lot easier on latex than an eyeshadow would. To really start giving that illusion of a skull, I decided to start blacking out all of the areas that I wanted to look recessed or give the idea that they were missing from the actual skull shape. To do this, I just filled in all of those areas with a black gel liner and then made sure to set them with a matte black eyeshadow. You definitely want this to be matte because that will really absorb the light and not have anything reflect off of it to give the idea of really sunken features on the face. Then to add a little bit more texture, I took a stippling sponge and the NYX SFX cream in brown and just applied that sporadically around the face. Then came the part that I personally had most fun with, which was crazy detail and shading. And for this, I just used an angle liner brush and the exact same brown cream face paint and just started creating all these little hints towards indents and shading all along the skull. A lot of this isn't really in this prosthetic sculpt itself, but it's something you can do to add your own features and unique touches to the makeup and help bring it to life. 
I wanted my scarecrow skull to look really detailed and multidimensional, so I just had fun with the cream paint and applied it wherever I felt it would work. The brown is also a great color here to use as a transition shade, so if there's areas that you eventually might want to go back in with black to look even more recessed, this is a fantastic color to base out those areas in and get an idea for how they would look if you were to shade them in darker or to create just a little bit more extra interest along the skull shape. For my really recessed areas, I went in with a black alcohol activated face paint. This is from my Skin Illustrator palette, and there actually are very fine little crack lines in the sculpt of this prosthetic that I wanted to kind of bring back out and highlight since they disappeared with all the makeup I had put on top of them. And then I also use this to better define the teeth because I really want them to read well from afar, so having that black in there will definitely help with that. Here, the alcohol paints really help because if you go a little bit too heavy with them, you can take some more alcohol and dilute them and blend them out, which was a nice feature for something like teeth, where I just want to kind of highlight the cracks and the separation points, but not actually make the teeth black. When I was done and happy with the skull, I went ahead and blacked out my neck, chest, and ears. This again helps it so that the skull will stand out on its own and kind of be the feature focal point for the look. Then I was able to go in with Prosade again and apply it to different areas where I wanted to apply burlap. I went ahead and just laid it down with a cotton swab and then as it got clear, I took some pieces of burlap that I had cut up and started laying them down to sections where I thought they would work. Once you lay down all the pieces that you want, throw on an awesome scarecrow hat, you are done for this skeletal scarecrow makeup. I definitely hope you guys enjoyed this one. I am so happy to be back into the swing of filming tutorials for you guys. It has felt like it has been forever. I am really pumped for all of the Halloween looks I have coming your way, and I hope you are as excited as I am. This was a little bit different to do a full prosthetic look for you guys, so please let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. But as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I, of course, will see you next video, and until then, bye guys.